All right, Gumi gang, welcome back. How are you guys doing? Hope everyone's doing okay. Today, we're going to be talking about a shotgun, question mark. It's actually not really a shotgun. It, it is kind of in a way, but it's an aftermarket part for the KV broadside. You know where I'm going with this. We're talking about the Jack Jawbreaker, and this is specifically for Warzone. I think Exclusive Ace covered this for multiplayer. Go check out his video if you want some multiplayer stats on it. Great video. And of course, this is going to be Warzone focused, and this is technically a shotgun, but it kind of converts it into sort of a automatic battle rifle. And I actually used it quite a bit and I'm having a good time with it. It is a little lackluster in some ways, but in other ways, it's a lot of fun to really use to kind of mix things up and just make for an interesting time when you use it. So with today's video, I'm going to share with you guys sort of some in-depth stats. I went in and I got the damage profile for this, share with you guys the time to kill values. And this is a long range sort of medium range weapon. So it's a little bit different than a shotgun, but again, I thought it'd be fun to go over. So if that sounds good to you guys, go ahead and check the timestamps below if you want to hop to a certain part of the video, like the damage and the range and stuff otherwise just buckle in and let's go ahead and cover it so like i said the jack jawbreaker is an aftermarket part for the kv broadside that essentially turns it into an automatic assault rifle or rather a battle rifle so it's basically not a shotgun anymore however i will point out it does use shotgun ammo which is kind of a downside because i think most bundles of shotgun ammo come in packs of eight and since this thing is sort of a rifle you're gonna need more than eight rounds when you pick up some ammo for it so make sure an ammo crate or one of those ammo caches is around you when you use this thing if we take a look at the damage profile, this is basically what I could come up with testing in-game. And as you can see from sort of the time to kill values and the shots to kill, it's not really super great at one thing. At close range, it's really not good as any SMG or any other shotgun, to be honest. It's going to get you melted because even if you hit all your shots exactly, it's still just not a really great time to kill. In medium range, that's kind of where this thing starts to excel a little bit more. And I'll put up on screen Jgod's long range time to kill spreadsheet. That's going to help kind of give you guys a little bit more of a better comparison. I think medium range in that second or rather the first drop off for this gun, that's kind of where it starts to shine. Not that it shines like in a crazy crazy way but it's definitely more competitive in that area now when you push past those ranges and you're getting past maybe 50 meters your time to kill is really nothing special and it kind of starts to fall short so really i feel like with this gun it's more primarily for resurgence and it's going to be mainly for those medium range engagements not really close or super far now there's a few other quirks we have to mention as well the first big thing is the magazine this by default only has 20 rounds and you can't equip any other magazine attachments that is a huge womp 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 moment for this gun only having 20 rounds is really not good especially when it takes at least six to seven to eight shots to kill if you're hitting good chest and stomach shots another thing that i mentioned before is that this thing does use shotgun ammo which is kind of interesting because you're not shooting shotgun shells but it does use shotgun ammo which again like before with what i said shotgun ammo tends to come in packs of eight from what i remember maybe 16 but either way you're not really getting a full magazine from a shotgun shell pack so just be mindful of that always look for an ammo crate or just maybe have scavenger on yourself if you use this i really recommend it and one of the other major quirks i want to point out with this is it seems to carry over some of the aim assist from the shotgun category which if you didn't know shotguns really don't get any aim assist past i think 25 meters or so which is fine because you don't really need it but this you kind of need it and unfortunately if you go in the dummy test range and you shoot the first two targets you'll notice aim assist is fine but that last target it's a little awkward. It doesn't seem to have aim assist from what I can tell. If you shoot the first two and kind of swap left and right with your controller thumbstick and try to get some aim assist on that last target dummy that's really far, you'll notice it doesn't really catch. There's no slowdown. And as soon as the other two pop up, it comes back. So that's a good way to indicate if it has any aim assist. And from what I can tell, it just doesn't at longer ranges. It's really awkward. But that being said, it doesn't really feel that difficult to use. The gun itself shoots pretty slow, so it is a bit unforgiving, like I said before. But one of the things that's really nice about this gun is it just feels pretty solid. I noticed that the recoil, it does have a little bit of a bounce, but it's not like a super visual recoil. It's a little strange because usually you have a gun with a ton of visual recoil, but the actual recoil pattern itself isn't that bad. This feels like it's kind of swapped where the visual isn't really that bad, but it does have a little bit of a bounce. So it's kind of strange, but it honestly feels pretty good. And every time I use this, I feel like I'm always hitting my shots pretty damn well at medium and long ranges. So I'm always pretty surprised at how that works. Now, in terms of some fun classes to try, the first one I'm going to show you is sort of your overall well-rounded long range class. We're going to be using the Jack Glassless Optic. We have the Bruin Heavy Support and the Cassis Break L. This is really going to cut down on a lot of the recoil that you might have, as well as the Demo X2 Grip. 
all these things combined, which really are the only attachments you can run on this thing besides lasers and some stocks, which don't really help for what you need on this gun. This gun does have some ease of use in the sense that it's pretty easy to control, but because of the slow fire rate and the damage it does, it's very unforgiving if you miss a couple of shots. And of course, 20 rounds is nothing to really laugh at. That's kind of sad. But another more fun class that you can try if you want to swap out and do something a little different is basically add the stockless attachment and add that Kimura Ryle 33 laser. And then you'll notice that this gun with its iron sights is actually quite a bit of fun to use. It's super strange because it's not really great for close range, more for medium, but it kind of has those AK-47 iron sights, which I find really fun. They are a little bit obtrusive down low, so if someone's drop shotting you up close, they may kind of just disappear unless you kind of compensate for it. But I found this class to be a ton of fun and actually felt really nice. Now, overall, do I recommend using this thing? Not necessarily if you're looking to be competitive. This is a fun option. I just think it's not really super competitive as you might imagine compared to a lot of other long and medium range guns, especially close range. But this thing is fun. It's a shotgun conversion kit that kits it into a battle rifle. And I'm honestly having more fun with it than I thought I would. Again, it's not super competitive. There's so many things that are just kind of holding it back from being crazy good but it just feels fun. I like the way that the recoil handles. I like the way the gun visibly shoots. I like how easy it is to control, even at medium and long ranges where the aim assist feels like it's not quite there. You'll notice it actually feels pretty good. So I'd say if you're looking for a fun new gun to try that's kind of a little bit different and a little bit more quirky rather than just competitive, this is a great one to try. It's got a lot of fun things about it that I enjoy. Just be warned, it has a lot of weird quirks that also make it a little bit less than competitive, but that's okay. It's not always about meta and competitive. We want fun and that's generally what this shotgun conversion kit really brings out is just fun. It makes it fun, it makes it different and a little unorthodox, but hey, it's something new and unique. So I wanted to cover and it is still technically a shock and after all. So that's pretty much going to do it for this guys. Now I want to know down below in the comments, what do you think about this gun? Have you used it? Have you used this conversion kit? Do you find it to be really nice or do you have a little bit of a struggle bus time when you actually try to use it? And with all that being said, guys, I will see you in the next video. Oh my God. I swear to God, we have